As what you're hearing in the news, it's being discussed locally about flattening the curve and social distancing. Our coordination between hospitals is starting to go a little bit like this. How would our rural hospitals, if we do have a surge in some areas and we are not affected in the beginning, would we be able to handle and help other communities with their surge? If we do surge and we need help, how would we get that help from other facilities? And so we're just having that dialogue right now and having that discussion. Some of our challenges have to do with the lab. Uh, the time from the, the time the specimen is taken until the time that we actually get the results right now is, is literally at five days. The state is trying very hard at the state level to reduce the turnaround time from 72 hours to 24 hours. The, uh, the, the, the impact of courier and the number of couriers and the number of couriers that are trained to get those specimens from your rural areas is one thing that's slowing that down, but we're all working diligently to make sure that we have that that's cut down time. Our other challenges are going to be with PPE, personal protective equipment, which includes gowns, masks, N95 masks, and this is something that we're, we will continue to uh, monitor as time goes forward to make sure that we have appropriate supplies to take care of our patients and protect our staff. The number of events available for respiratory illness are being monitored at the state level. We do have a number of events and we are listing those as part of the state listing just like any other healthcare facility. The negative pressure rooms, we have three currently at the hospital, but that is a limited number. In your rural facilities, we don't carry the number of negative pressure rooms as you do in other areas, but we do have some. We have been challenged by the, uh, not challenged, but, but given recommendations by the Louisiana Department of Health with regard to elective procedures. And we've reviewed all of the items that we have at the hospital and the clinic to make a decision on what we should continue to see and what we should discontinue seeing. And we continue to monitor the exposure rates to see what we will and will not continue to provide our goal, again, is to minimize foot traffic, maximize social distancing, and in our health system, we want to also give our provider who knows the patient, because our nurse practitioners and our MDs and our physician assistants know most every one of the, of, in the community as one of their patients, and they can make an assessment as to whether that is a, a need that could be addressed or needs to be addressed today or can be pushed another 20 days or 30 days. In our clinics, we were just on the verge of, of uh, installing our telehealth process so that our providers could use telehealth to be able to keep, uh, keep our connection with the patient uh, from a, a distance location like their home or even from the car in the parking lot. So when you hear the governor talk about drive-through testing and things like that, we are we're looking at our processes and currently what we're doing is we're testing in an area that is isolated and uh, somewhere where we can have uh, the, the, the person being tested uh, with minimum exposure to staff and to other patients. But the telehealth process we should have up and running by the end of the week will also help us do that. I'm going to ask for Mark Goodson to come up and give a little bit more detail and just talk to you a little bit about the planning cycle what we've been doing and uh, what we're currently doing from his perspective. And uh, Mark, Mark Goodson. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Mike. Just want to talk to you a little bit about our preparation that we've made uh, in anticipation of increased cases of COVID virus. Uh, we've been our uh, the past several weeks, we've been working on a policy uh, to deal with the anticipated influx of patients. Um, and this policy addresses both hospital and clinics. The goal of SMC and associated clinics are to decrease the opportunities for exposure. And we do that like to just to allude to what Mike said, uh, via social distancing, stay at home if you're ill, uh, through hand hygiene, through use of hand sanitizer or soap and water. You're encouraged to uh, sanitize your hands for at least 15 to 20 seconds to be effective. 
Uh, also a goal is to uh, disinfect your surfaces frequently, your high touch areas, your flat surfaces throughout your house. And we also have put out public information to all patients and visitors uh, just to kind of educate you a little bit more about the COVID virus, uh, general information. Uh, we included that in our hospital internet on Facebook, uh, as well as our intranet for our employees. We put out an, an informational video as well. Uh, we placed signs in front of all facilities encouraging people to stay home unless they're needing to seek medical attention. Uh, the goal for those requiring medical attention is first to triage the ill patients, to identify persons with confirmed or possible COVID-19 or the coronavirus. We do that by asking a series of three questions. Also to isolate, to inform, to treat, and to self-quarantine if necessary. Uh, as part of our policy, we've restricted uh, visitation from the hours of 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. to one visitor per patient. We have no visitation at night until 8 o'clock the next morning. Uh, we've closed all entrances and exits to one which is in our emergency department and all employees and visitors are screened. Uh, their, their temperature is checked when they arrive uh, for shift as well as when they arrive to visit. Um, and we place a sticker on each individual that comes in to let them know that they have been screened uh, when they arrive so we don't have anybody fall through the cracks, so to speak. Thanks, Mark. And uh, we'll be opening up the questions here just a little bit so you get a chance to ask Mark any questions that you might have. Uh, let me ask Doc Wayne Sessions to come up and uh, just address uh, our, our preparation from his perspective as well. Thank you. Well, on behalf of the uh, physicians and the uh, mid-levels, all the caregivers that we have at our clinics, uh, this has really been something unusual and, and almost uh, unheard of for us too. And we ask that you do have uh, some patience with us because this process has evolved almost every day. We go from this to that to the other and we're trying to stay on top of it. Our main goal is, as caregivers, number one, take care of our patients. That is both the ones who might have a, a virus and be sick are those people who have the flu and pneumonia and all these other illnesses that have, are still coming into our clinic. We still have flu, we still have pneumonia. We still have older people that need uh, proper medical care. So we're trying to do that all at the same time. We hope that we've evolved into a process where we can separate out the potential uh, 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 virus victims so that we can put them in the proper setting, that we can test them for the virus, and then we can properly uh, uh, take care of them. Also, during this process, we, we've, uh, we have uh, a code of dress. We have some things that our, that our providers are doing to try to protect themselves. Because if this thing does become very, very you know, broad, broad spread, like some people predict, you, we want to have some providers to take care of those who really get sick from it. And certain percentage of people get very sick. So we have to protect our providers, our nurses, our doctors, our mid-levels. So we will be wearing protective gear. And so uh, some people say, oh, that scares people when they come in to see you with a mask on. Or, uh, we ask you to you know, tell your kids that you're bringing them that, hey, the doctor and the nurse are going to be kind of dressed up today something like that to let them know that we're trying to protect our, our uh, health care providers. We meet, we've been meeting every day. We've gone through uh, uh, everything that we can do to make it safe, to make it uh, a, a proper a procedure. But please be patient. There are changes every single day, and, and we may change our process you know, in a few days. But right now, we, we're, we're in the midst of really getting on We've had, uh, like Mike said, we've had several cases. We've been kind of tested out, and our and our personnel are now picking up on the, the proper way to do it. Thank you. Thanks, Doc. 
Um, next, I'd like to ask Chief Will Lynn if you'd like to address the, uh, from the uh, police chief's perspective, of course, you get to see where the rovers meet the road, and, and the folks would love to hear, you know, what your particular take is on, on matters. Thank you, Mike. First thing I'm seeing is uh, it's either you don't have any in between. If you have people that are panicking and going out and buying everything they can afford at the grocery store, or you have the other left-hand side who's, oh, this is no no worse than the flu. Very few people are meeting in the middle and understanding, yes, this is not the end of the world. Our lives are going to change for a couple of weeks or a couple of months. Who knows how long? But we're not going to starve to death. When's the last time you saw anybody starve to death in America? There's plenty of food. There's plenty of water. Uh, and hopefully then in the future there will be plenty of toilet paper where everybody gets over this. Uh, you don't have to go do that. There's plenty of supplies for us. It's not the end of the world or the apocalypse. Uh, but you do need to take it serious. You need to find that good common ground in the middle. Uh, I spoke with Sheriff Sexton yesterday, and the governor has issued orders for restaurants to close down. Uh, he and I are on the same page that, that we're not going to infringe upon what, whatever you do, but you need to use good common sense and not endanger yourself because when you get to thinking about it, you make contact with one person, then that person goes in here and you go there. That's how it spreads. So just use some good common sense. Um, the police departments, the sheriff's offices, we're doing everything we can do for public safety because unfortunately, with, with even with this pandemic going on, um, bad things are going to still happen to good people. We're still doing our job. We're not going home. We may have to work shorthanded when this hits the area. Uh, but we're there for you. We will be continue to be there for you. Um, once again, can't stress enough, wash your hands. Everything I've read, if you wash your hands, you use hand sanitizer. Wipe your phones down. Phones are a major carrier of any virus or anything, and keep your hands away from your face. Uh, other than that, if anybody has any questions later, I'll be glad to answer them. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Appreciate you. Is it Angela? Angela, would you like to address the city? That'd be great. Why don't you come up here where the microphone is and the phone is. This is uh, Angel Rao. Thank you. From the uh, Webster Parish Health Unit. Thank you for being here, Angel. Actually, I work at the um, Northwest Regional uh, Office. We um, take care of the Northwest region, monitor all the care um, health units around this Northwest area. One thing from the OPH perspective is I wanted to be sure that everyone is aware that they can get information. There is um, a line that you can call. It's 211. It is an information line. You can call, ask questions. You can also text. Um, off, um, you can text LA COVID to 898 211, and you will get a text message back, and it will tell you um, a website. You'll have click on a link and it will take you to the um, LDH website where you can keep up with how many cases we have in the state, how many parishes are affected. It keeps up with the total number of tests that we perform and even the number of deaths. There's also a map that will show you parish by parish. You can click on each one and see how many cases are there. That website is ldh.la.gov with a forward slash coronavirus. It's the best place to get information, either from there or the CDC website. CDC has lots of information that will be available to you. Um, you can download posters that you can post at your facilities, the hand washing, um, reminding you of social distancing, not touching your hands or your face, um, calling ahead actually before you go to your um, medical provider to make sure that, hey, do I need to come in? That's a very important message. And I think y'all done a really good job already today of outlining all the things that we need to be doing and it sounds like you've got everything in place so that's really good so i'll be open for questions too but i want to make sure everybody had that information it's 211 that you can dial or you can text la covid which is la covid to 898-211 thank you angela if you want to stay up here so we can hear you that questions um, is there anyone here that had anything they needed to present to the community? This is an opportunity with leaders on the phone. Might anyone have anything additional that they'd like to share? Okay. Okay, go ahead. This is Gary Mudd. I'm the administrator at Carrington Place of Springfield. And I would just like to take this opportunity to let everybody know that we're kind of going on quarantine right now. We do not accept any visitors at this time. 
Thank you, Gary, and we uh, we cherish your partnership as always, but especially in this time. So thank you for that. Uh, I think I heard someone else on the line that wanted to have an introductory comment. Thank you, Vince, and appreciate the, uh, the many times a, a week that we are on the phone and, uh, and recently in these discussions. We appreciate you and Willis Knight, and please get the word back over there that we appreciate their help. Would anybody else like to have introductory comments? Yes, sir, I can hear you. Thank you, Dr. McMahon, and we really appreciate you being on the phone with us, but more importantly, what you're doing in the state legislature and in, uh, in representing us in the rural areas, for sure. That's that's uh, very appreciated. Anyone else on the line that wants to, from their perspective or, or their, uh, whether it's industry or pastoral care or uh, other um, civic leaders, anyone else on the line that would like to have some comments? Yes. Yes, sir. Can you, we can hear you. Go ahead. Hey, hey Mike. Hey, Todd. appreciate that. It's taking the social distancing very seriously, and I know this impacts industry, but I think it's measures like that are important in, in this issue. Thank you, David. Is there anything else that you'd like to share? Yes, sir, we will. Thank you and Todd for being online. Uh, 
and I'll, and I'll, I'll keep extending it out there. Is there anyone else from their from their uh, industry or uh, from the from the church? Anyone have uh, an announcement they want to put out here to the to the audience that we have? Yes. I sure can. It's great to hear you, Johnny. Thanks for being online. Yeah, well, I just, too, wanted to echo the sentiments from so many. Uh, how appreciative that we all are for the good work you and your team are doing there in Northwest Missouri. Just a couple of things I want to let you know about that you may already know, but if you don't, I would like to share with you. And we will uh, uh, be beginning tomorrow morning feeding programs. Uh, for our kids uh, starting at 8 o'clock at Northwester High School and then down in Charesta at Northwester Junior. And uh, we will be serving breakfast and lunch. And that will run from 8 to 12, Monday through Friday, uh, during this time of school closure. And I uh, wanted you guys to be aware of that and uh, know about that. So uh, it's something that I know that a lot of our parents, uh, community members, uh, are appreciative of, and, uh, you know, uh, for us especially, uh, making sure that we've got things in place uh, uh, that can not only help protect our kids, but, you know, take care of their well-being and their uh, their uh, nutritional needs at this time is, is paramount to us. So, uh, uh, as you know, of course, our kids are not in school right now, uh, and, frankly, most of our employees, are not at work right now, uh, and that will be for the foreseeable future. But uh, uh, it's like uh, Dr. McMahon said, we're in unprecedented time, but who knows what the future holds. But uh, definitely appreciate all that you guys are doing, and uh, we will try to keep everyone informed about what we've got going uh, as things change almost daily. Uh, again, thank you very much. Mr. Rowland, I have to comment that when we started calling around last week, you guys had already been out and about and produced information for families and, and can't thank you enough for getting ahead of things from the school district. Very proud to be associated with uh, with leaders that are making things happen in the community. Thank you. I'm going to look this thing together. Yes, yes, sir. That's right. Um, Mark, I'm, I'm going to ask, uh, and we can take this offline, but uh, um, Johnny, as you're, as you're bringing folks through, we might want to look at, just like we're screening folks at the hospital as they come in, uh, we may want to uh, help you with that. So maybe we can connect after the telephone meeting or, 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 or later and just discuss that. You probably already have measures in place, but in case you don't, if we need help, we'll be glad to, to help you there. Anyone else on tele telephone land? Yes, sir. Mr. Mike, hi there, sir. This is uh, Pastor Lonnie Moore, Jr. from the Harrison Chapel Baptist Church there in Springfield. Yes, sir. And uh, I, too, would like to, yes, sir, I too would like to echo the great job that you guys are doing there. And thank you for this wonderful uh, opportunity to hear about the information concerning this virus. And I'm certainly going to bring that information to uh, the other clergy that are not on uh, the conference call, and also to the members uh, of Harrison Chapel. So I really do appreciate it. Uh, I see you and I chief and all of your entire staff are doing a wonderful job. I was invited by Sister uh, Donna, Donna Mari, and of course, uh, Sister Mary Umwood is one of my members. And so we really do appreciate the hard work that you guys are doing to make sure that our communities are safe, and we just thank you guys very much for praying for you all. Thank you, and we all need those prayers, so keep them coming. Thank you, sir. Leaving the mic open for anyone else. Mike, Mike, Mark. Okay. Mike? Yes, ma'am. This is Margaret Edens with the school board. Um, I don't really have anything to add other than what Johnny Rowland has shared with everyone, but I do have some questions that I would like for Mr. Rowland to address while we have everyone. And that is the question that I've gotten from parents. What are we doing to uh, disinfect the schools and the buses? So if he would like to address that, I think that would be good. That's a great question. Great question, Ms. Eason, and I'm glad you asked it. We sent out a district-wide initiative on yesterday that today all custodial staff would, support, would report to their schools with the sole mission of disinfecting those campuses. Uh, 
Uh, some of you may know we use a product called Vital Oxide, and uh, along with others. Uh, and uh, that was the mission today. I had I sent people out to make sure how that was going, but that was happening, and we did do that today. And then what we're going to allow our, our our staffs to do over the course of the next couple of days to go up if they need to get anything out of their rooms, uh, tie up any loose ends at their at their schools. They can do so, and then starting Monday, schools will essentially be locked down. Uh, principals and assistant principals will be at work. Folks can go there uh, by appointment only. Then, if we do return to school uh, on April 14th, which I know that's a big question mark right now, what we will do that week leading up to that is that we will disinfect again. And... Uh, uh, pretty much shut the schools down again after that uh, if we do receive kids uh, at that time. So that is a great question. Uh, we are uh, trying, and we're also, we'll be doing the same thing with our school buses uh, uh, during this time. If I hope I answered your question, I'll be glad to take any more you may have. Um, no, you did. Uh, these are questions that parents have been asking me, and I thought this was a great opportunity for you to share this. Yeah, that's a good question. I sent this demo out to uh, every employee in Webster Parish uh, yesterday, but, but I guess you're right. Parents should see that, so they would not know. It's a good question. Okay, leaving the mic open for a moment. Again, Mr. Rowan and Ms. Edens, we appreciate all the work you guys are putting into, and I know those meals will be appreciated. Mike, this is Glenn. Mike, this is Glenn B. Hunt. Uh, I've been trying to come in, but I didn't realize I had my earphones in and didn't realize uh, that you guys couldn't hear me. Uh, to go along with what the uh, pastor uh, there in Spring Hill had said, um, we certainly, I think I can speak for most of uh, all the churches and the pastors, appreciate everything that all of our uh, leaders are doing, and uh, I think uh, prayer uh, is so important, the, uh, the fact that uh, there's care, and that's what it's all about, is caring for each other. Um, and each individual and those most uh, vulnerable. And uh, just to let all of you uh, know that um, we, uh, we as the churches and pastors appreciate everything everybody's doing. And uh, we ourselves, as far as the uh, meetings uh, that we have, uh, we're, uh, we're all trying to provide uh, all of the uh, information that we've uh, received. And uh, this works again for the East Coast, uh, everybody to, you know, the pastor certainly pray in the church, but, but we as individuals, we're the church, and uh, we just want to encourage uh, everyone to pray and trust God, and He's going to lead us through all of this. Once again, thank you very much, and uh, thank you for allowing each of us to be in our good Brother Gladden, we always appreciate you, and thanks for your partnership. And I think uh, you all on the line that are pastors, you have a, such an important role. We can't underscore that enough. And if you're like me, one of the hardest things for you to do right now is to stop shaking hands, but I'm going to give you the challenge. I'm going to turn that into something like the ice bucket yeah. challenge. If I catch any of you guys shaking hands, I'm going to pour an ice bucket on you. <laughs> <laughs>
That is very Mike. difficult. Yes, ma'am. Mike. This is Diane Stephen. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Diane. I just want to thank you. Hey, I just want to thank you and the president and the board, uh, the hospital employees, and once again, this community and our leaders. They make, all of you make me very proud that I'm from this community. It's heartwarming to know that we come together in a time like this. Yes, ma'am, Ms. Thank Diane. You. Thank you. We appreciate your words, and those are strong words of encouragement. Anybody else on the line out there? It's Mary Armwood. I'm on the line, but everything that's been said, I just want to echo. I agree. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. And Patricia's here in the audience as well. Appreciate you, Patricia. I see you waving at us. Okay, I'm going to, uh, if we have any other questions that, that come up in the next couple of minutes as I'm starting to wrap some things up, uh, um, Major H Mayor Huddleston will have a, a couple more things to wrap up with, and then uh, Dr. Sessions will close us in prayer. But just a couple of closing comments. One is this is unprecedented times, and it's time for us all to, to gather the wagons and work together, and, and uh, I appreciate all of the, the sentiment for our, our healers and our, our, uh, our officers and our educators because those folks that are out there uh, touching patients, touching folks in the community, feeding folks in the community, it, it's really important during this time that we take care of those that are doing the hard work. And uh, I'm looking over at Paula and at Mark, uh, Paula Duck and Mark Goodson, and these two guys have been working very hard and have set us up for success uh, but the, the challenge is out there and the work's not done. So we're going to continue to, to take care of things over uh, at, the, at the health system and to reiterate what Dr. Sessions said, it, it, it will change. Things will change uh, today. As we come back to the hospital, we'll probably find some more news out. It'll change tomorrow and it'll continue to change. Uh, but we'll, we'll work hard to do our best for our, for our community. And a couple of the things I want to put on, and we just can't say it enough. If you're shaking hands, please stop. It is the hardest thing I've ever had to do is stop shaking hands. So men, stop shaking hands. Women, stop hugging. I know you want to hug. Stop hugging. Wash your hands as often as you can. Drink a lot of water. If your fever is 100.4, if it's 100.4 or greater, that's the trigger for us not to let someone in the health system. That's the trigger for you to seek attention. If you are uncomfortable or you even have a question, please give our staffs a call. We have at every clinic, we have folks manning the phone. We are setting up our telehealth. And so please check our website and continue to look for ways for us to communicate with you wherever you are. And then if it, following this phone call, if you have any issue that you feel like needs attention, uh, you got Mark Goodson's phone number. Uh, as well as mine, feel free to reach out to us and we'll get connected with you. Okay, also I'd like to thank Derek and all the others that helped us put all this together logistically. It's never easy to put something together quickly. Uh, and lastly, uh, Mayor Huddleston, thanks again for your leadership and for allowing us to, to work along with you by your side to take care of things from the, from the hospital side and the clinic side. And I will look forward to just continuing to move things forward with you the next couple of weeks. In months. Okay, thanks. Turn it over to you, Mayor. Okay, thank you, Mike. Uh, and two, I mean, it's a partnership between the city of Spring Hill and the hospital, and I think we work real well together. I'm so glad we, we are here together. I just wanted to mention that uh, as we continue to provide water service and other services for the, the citizens of Spring Hill, I called a special uh, city council meeting last night to get their approval. Um, for us to be able to, uh, we're not going to cut any water off uh, to the citizens of Spring Hill for non-payment. Uh, and also we're waiving $50 late charges uh, also. Um, and another uh, announcement, at rental of any of our buildings, of the city buildings, uh, we, we're not going to be able to rent them. And, and right now we're refunding any money that you paid to, to reserve the buildings. Uh, and we're going to resume, uh, like like Wayne said, it changes daily, but we're going to try to resume all this on June 1st. That's all I have. 
Yeah, Chief. Um, I know next week there was a planned city cleanup in Spring Hill where the council had allowed individuals to burn their trash and leaves. That has been rescinded as well uh, due to the fact that the coronavirus is a respiratory virus and a bunch of smoke in there is the last thing we need if we do have an outbreak. Uh, you can still clean up, but there will be no burn during that during that time period of next week. So please remember that and follow the city ordinance and no burn. I almost forgot, but I do want to say uh, for our community leaders, we, we do have a great partnership with Homer Hospital. Uh, Tina Haynes, the CEO over there, and her staff, I got to tell you, have been working uh, as hard as anybody that, that, that's in the rural areas, and we are exchanging notes. We've got uh, the Homer Clinic and the Butler Apshire Clinic are affiliated with Spring Hill Medical Center, as well as Bradley Clinic, uh, our, our own doctor's clinic in uh, North Webster. But at each of these locations, including our physical therapy, each one of our staff are, are well trained. They're getting updates on a regular basis, and we'll continue to try and uh, uh, make sure that our information is updated so that we're taking care of folks. And between us and the uh, the Homer community, if there's anybody dialing in from that area over there, uh, you've got a, a great community hospital and a community that's taking care of you as well. And uh, we'll look forward to continued partnership with with. Tina and her folks over there. Uh, Doc Sessions, would you mind closing us in prayer? Let us pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, as we come together today uh, faced with one of the most difficult uh, times that uh, our city, our state, and our nation, and even the world has encountered in a long, long time. Lord, we know that good things can come from bad things. And Lord, that we, we ask that we all work together, that we give, that we not try to take, not take advantage of anyone. But Lord, that we help each other and we love each other and we get each other through this very difficult time. Lord, we know that there will be illness involved. There will be some uh, uh, loss of, uh, uh, of lives that, that uh, according to the statistics, but you, we ask, Lord, to please wrap your arms around our community and, and give us the very best care. And, Lord, once again, we ask that you uh, uh, make something good, help us make something good out of a very bad situation, as we know you can, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, Don. Okay, signing off from the CAC, and uh, we'll wish you all well and have a great day. Wow, thank you. Thank you, guys. It was actually.